When I finished my first degree in biological sciences, I moved into industry, but I actually studied for a PhD in industry. At the time, there were not so many opportunities available in my chosen sector for research careers, but I wanted to still stay with the same scientific area, which was brewing science. Initially, I did a PhD in phonetics, but I think I've always, in my heart, been an engineer. I used to work for Rhetorical Systems, which was a speech synthesis company that I went to after my PhD, which gave me this sort of confidence to try and build speech synthesis systems myself. But at the same time, I was also interested in academia, so I put in a research project as well, and actually both happened. I was lucky enough to do uh, an engineering degree at the University of Bath, and my first day at university was actually in a factory. So my work is in industrial sustainability. We'd like the factories of the world to be able to live within the environmental limits of the planet. Today we're in the factory of Vitsu. If Vitsu come up to a problem they don't know how to solve, then we will work with them and help them solve that problem. Our language of engineering research is very similar to the language of engineering practice. It is a problem-solving language and that makes it much easier for engineers to get close to practice. In an academic sense, one might talk about the underpinning science, challenges from a scientific perspective. It's actually not so different in industry. There are challenges, it's just the language that's different. If you're an academic and you have recorded the voice badly, you know it can be done well. So you can focus on the ideas. But from a commercial perspective, if it sounds bad, they don't care what the ideas are. The way in which academics are now measured is encouraging the potential transfer across. But the biggest challenge is in publications. I think there's always this issue right at the beginning of an academic career of building the credibility uh, of yourself as a scientist. You have to publish in order to be able to do that and be recognised by the funding bodies. Very often when people join a commercial organisation, they find it's very hard to retain any type of academic presence. I think it's important to find an academic institution that is friendly to you and you can get on with. In my first job as a lecturer, academic, my university was very relaxed about the number of journal outputs I was expected to produce and that allowed me to get close to practitioners. It allowed me to make those investments and once you've made those investments, actually the papers start flowing because you're doing really interesting research that's really important. When an academic is working with a corporate, they very much learn about that sector and about some of the key challenges that are involved in that sector. And that also influences their research and an individual can then actually draw upon them to think about new ways in which they might approach a problem. It helps if you can get money and funding. I apply for funding from the Royal Society who have uh, industrial research fellows. And that was great because it allowed me to explore some of the crazy ideas I wanted to do within my fellowship while working on the basic technology of the company. The key running theme is the passion that you have for your science and the way it could be applied. As long as you have that, you can actually operate in either sector. How much fun can you have and be paid at the same time? 